Shame and guilt from dating the narcissist is something I struggled with for a long time. And at times, that thought still comes to me, but I got over it in many ways. One way was just realizing that this person is <laughs> completely out of their mind and they have a personality disorder. I stopped taking it so personally. A big part of shame and guilt is when you feel like something you did was your fault. You feel that you are an idiot or gullible or whatever because of what happened. But another reason I stopped feeling those feelings so intensely is because I started, you know, interacting with people on this channel and other places and I've started hearing their stories of whether they're really successful people like a doctor or a lawyer or some very beautiful person or just, you know, some regular guy. It doesn't it doesn't matter what your social status or whatever in life is. Everyone, you know, that's another thing. Everyone is susceptible to these lies and manipulations because it plays to, at, a, at a part of the human condition that we all have, even narcissists. N narcissists can love bomb and like reel in and fool other narcissists as well. And they're actually more susceptible to all those lies and ma manipulations because that's another thing, you know, maybe that'll add to the shame and guilt, but narcissists are kind of, they're fools, like they're, they're silly people. They seem smart to us and they seem like we, like they got us over so bad because they've put us in a state, an emotional traumatic state where our thinking isn't right anymore. That's a big part of it. Because of all the abuse, because of all the gaslighting, because of them smearing our name from the flying monkeys to our family their family everyone it, it makes us feel like we're not worthy but in reality it's just it's just in that world and if you think those flying monkeys they know like that that's one of the things that brought a lot of shame to me is like the people around the narcissist unless they're really unless they're narcissists themselves or they're just really lost people like some you know person just has really no social skills they know what's up and that that was a little bit of um shame and guilt inducing the fact that you know other people around the narcissist were kind of like you didn't you know you didn't see this going on like you didn't notice that whatever becky you say that next the narcissist's name is becky for whatever reason you didn't notice that becky was totally like kind of crazy maybe they don't even know what narcissism is but they could tell and Narcissism is on a spectrum. Every narcissist does all kinds of different techniques and has different tools and tactics of manipulation where, but in my personal situation, I kind of knew. I knew that the narcissist, that there was something kind of weird, like there was red flags. There was these moments where I caught them smirking in like really inappropriate times, right? Like, or we'd be going to bed and I'd say, I'm just gonna stay up a little bit. And they'd like, give me this really evil, now I'm like, I'm like, in the moment, I was like, you know, I can't even do it. But we've all seen like this really like ear to ear, kind of like if you've seen like the Joker from Batman, they're like really weird, like ear to ear grin. And they kind of have these cold dead eyes where they're just like, like a shark, you know, it, it's, the, it's the creepiest thing. And in the moment, I'm just like, all right, you, you know, you weirdo, but like, it's because we're so, because the narcissist portrays themselves as the perfect partner, we tend to excuse a lot of these things. It, it's um, it's cognitive dissonance, and you see it all the time. It's it's part of the human condition. Like, and if you don't think, and if you, and to make you not feel as guilt ridden and shameful, think of like smokers. We we all see them. They're just like, like you know, and and they know. They know they're getting cancer and they know it's bad for them and they still do it. You could say, well, they're addicted. I can't quit. That's part of it. But even people who aren't necessarily addicted, but they still have those like cigarettes when they're drunk or just, you know, just on the weekends, people know that it's super bad for you. And they, and, and like even more so with vaping, like the studies and the proof is there. And that just shows how much, how much human beings are 
I always, you know, I've, I haven't spoken about it in a while, but I always drive that concept of the conscious and the unconscious. And truly, most of what we do as human beings is unconscious. And we like to believe that we're these really rational, fully in control beings, but we're really not. Like, a quick example is, you know when, like, maybe you've had it happen in your life where there's, like, a bug or a spider on you, and all of a sudden you're just going to, boom, you react. And you don't, need, you don't think about it, right? You're like, okay, pan fat, you know? Like, you're not, it's not a cognitive thing that you will to do. Your hand just kind of reacts. And it's almost out of your control, right? A lot of our thoughts, our daily actions are like that. And when we met the narcissist, they triggered a lot of our unconscious desires. They triggered a lot of our traumas that we might not even be aware of. And this created cognitive dissonance. That's why we, we're so stuck to them even to this day they really touch those parts of the human experience that are our emotions or what some people like to call the soul, those deep inner parts of ourselves. And like I said, we, we like to believe that we're these really cold, rational, a fully controlled beings, but and we have, right? We have free will. That's, that's part of the, about being a person, but it's not as, as strong unless you develop it as strong as you would want it to be. That's why you can't just kind of like, you know, clench your fist and like will yourself out of not thinking about the narcissist or like, or force yourself to stop being depressed. It doesn't work that way. You can, there are things and these are kind of the things that I talk about where you can use that like, that part of your brain that is in control to like direct yourself into these directions uh, or direct yourself in, in like a manner where you stop being depressed, right? You, instead of like a, a fast example to get better for anything really, it's just, when you have like a negative, when you're feeling like, for example, the guilt or shame of why me? I'm such an idiot. Like, how could I let this happen? There's always a, a silver lining to everything, even very um, dramatic and sad experience with the narcissist. There are silver linings and there's silver linings and there's good and bad things about everything that happens to us in life. One of the greatest skills I've learned about just, you know, policing myself and, and flipping that switch within me is that when something bad happens and it's tough in the moment, when things happen in the moment, you're going to ruminate, you're going to feel like crap. And, but after a while, I try to see the bright side in things like with the narcissist, instead of being like, I'm an idiot. How could I let this happen? I'm like, well, I learned a lot from this experience. I learned about narcissism. I learned that sometimes I trust people too much and now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to learn to, um, not like just fall in love with anybody that just shows me any affection, right? There's you flip the the script on yourself, and that allows you to not to kind of reframe situations and not be so caught up in whatever it might be, whether it's shame, guilt, depression. The narcissist wants you in this state. They want you to. That's how they keep you trapped. They they try to guilt trip you, right? They flip the script. They tell you this is all your fault. You're an idiot. I never really loved you. All those hurtful, terrible things they tell you. That's they're they're just trying to keep you trapped. And the longer you feel guilt and shame about something that was really, you know, people hate and people say that I victim blame, but the truth is, it doesn't matter. Like even if an asteroid comes and hits me right now, it's partly my fault because I came, I made the decision to come to this part of the house. And you can say, well, well, like, yeah, but that's still not your fault. My point in saying is that, like, nothing in life is, even if you only had, like, even if it's, like, uh, like on a circumstance like this where it's not really my fault that the freaking asteroid hit me, but I still just they made those decisions to come here. You see what I'm saying? I still put myself in that situation, even though, of course, that's not my fault. And, of course, when you a narcissist comes and meets you and manipulates you and you're just trying to be a good person and live your life, it's not your fault. But when you allow yourself to be at least a little bit guilty, even if it's 0.01% guilty, it allows you the capacity to learn from your experiences and just not, it, it stops you from ruminating and stops you from feeling whatever it might be, whether it's guilt, shame, depression, anything.